Hey everybody, today is gonna to be an awesome little experiment. This is single-handedly the best Telecaster I've ever played. It weighs just over six pounds. It's like 6.2, 6.3 pounds. It's got hand-wound pickups, black guard, typical Tele wiring, great feeling neck. There's only one problem. It's not a Fender. This is a Danacaster single cut guitar and far out, it is the best rock Tele I've ever played. Really awesome sound to it. Great woody texture. I mean, you'll hear it later in the video. It's got Voodoo TE50s in it right now. It's got the neck pickup measures 7.75. The bridge measures 8.2 and that's measured in the guitar. We're gonna take those out because the owner of this guitar, which is not me, which is a crime, wants to do a pickup swap. We're gonna put in some Ron Ellis pickups, some hand wound pickups out of, out of California. We're gonna put a 5060 in the bridge and a Julian Lodge in the neck. So the bridge pickup's gonna be reminiscent of a 50s style Blackguard Tele. The neck is mimicked off of Julian's 54 Tele. We're gonna pop those in. So we'll give you some specs along the way. First, we're gonna do that pickup swap and you'll see that in the video. And then we're gonna do the sound test of before and a sound test of after. So hang out with me for a few minutes, grab a beverage of choice, and let's see how awesome this telly sounds. Okay, let's start to do our pickup swap. Just give you an idea of the space we're working in. All right, first thing we're gonna do, Take the strings off. We should be able to leave these on. We'll see. Let's get that black guard off. And pretty much have to take the whole guitar apart because we also need the control panel off. So I'll have to take the bridge out, take the black guard off because you can't take the pickup out it's screwed directly into the body without taking the guard off like this. Here we go. So the black guard's off. Black guard. That will just sit off to the side until we need it again. Just to give you an idea, there are the screws that hold that on. You can see the wire lead going right into the control cavity. So that's what we're gonna have to do. Just front loaded. There's no back cover here on these tellies. So run in through that front control plate. Let's see what we're dealing with. We'll just take the screws out so we know where we're going. All right, so here's the control cavity. Oh, that's great. We got a lot of wire lead. So this is gonna be quite easy. Um, well, I say easy. This is gonna be easier to deal with because there's more room to do things, so that's great. You also see our neck pickup wiring. It's a common ground. Here, grab this. Got a common ground where the neck pickup ties in. And then on the hot side, right there. So we'll map the same out for our bridge pickup. And then we'll figure out our plan of attack to which order we want to do the pickups in. These bridge screws are some heftier screws. Let me try to tilt this up a little bit so you can see them. They're heftier screws that hold that bridge in. So I just grabbed a much more significant screwdriver. There we go. I'd rather shock this off of the body as opposed to digging underneath, but we'll see what it takes. That might have been enough. Ah, perfect. Just a rubber mallet, little flathead screwdriver, just enough to crack whatever that bond between the lacquer and the metal. Just holding it on tight enough where I couldn't do it by hand. All right, so there's our bridge pickup. So that's easy enough. Pickups are just gonna be two screws here, three screws here. We'll set the heights once it's all in the guitar. Before we started any of this, I had these pickup heights set up at Fender spec, uh, just so that again, it wasn't a variable between pickup sets. So we'll reset them once we get them in. So let's have at that. We have to undo the wires before we can pull them back through. Certainly not gonna cut the wires. You could, 
snip the wires and join them and then have something maybe where you didn't have to take the control cavity apart. Here it's so easy, it doesn't make sense. We'll just, we will desolder them. It's Christmas time. By Christmas time, I mean time to check out these Ron Ellis pickups. True vintage tone, California made. 5060 Telly, Julian Lage Nick. Let's check them out. Bubble wrap, that's good. Ellis Signature, 5060T, very cool, for a sec. Take out this neck pickup. All right, Ron Ellis, JL, just what we want to see. Does have a non-aged sort of cover, but that's okay. This hardware is also gonna be sunk in the body cavity. Doesn't have hardware though, so we will reuse the hardware that we took out with the old neck pickup, which is fine. All right, so let's bag the old pickups back up. Uh, but before we do that, let's take the old set and the new set and just get some readings resistance-wise now that everything's out of the guitar. All right, can you guys see that? I have the two neck pickups and the two bridge pickups. I have the set that came with the guitar and the Ron Ellis set. So let's look at the neck pickups. Can you guys see that? Just have a little multimeter. The neck pickup that came with the guitar outside of the guitar itself, so just the pickup DC resistance, 8.14, 8.15. And what we're putting into the guitar, the Ron Ellis set, it's supposed to be a bit underwound. Oh, 5.8. Yes, that will be noticeable. We'll see. We'll see if it sounds different. 8.15, 5.8 on the new set. Let's check out these bridge pickups. The bridge pickup that came with the guitar, 8.6, 8.63. All right, what do you guys think on this 5060 set from Ron Ellis? 8.63 came out. Oh, sorry. 7.17 going in. So in both cases, we have significantly lower output pickups going into the guitar, both neck and bridge. That'll be exciting and fun. It was quite compressed, this guitar, going into the overdrive channel, so uh, going into the overdrive sound. So it'll be interesting to see if there's more clarity, if there's more openness. We'll see. All right, let's put these in. Let's get back to work. It's a little bit tight, gotta be careful here. Very thin plastic back plate on this neck pickup. So let's feed these leads down a little the lead ends are pre-tinned which is nice i don't need to put the screws in yet but i'll just do a couple turns to anchor it down because this won't have to move also i'm not going to gain any wire by having that free so for us right now it's fine that that's in there we know where that's going here. Also, we know this is going to get twisted with the other grounds and then and put onto here. Now we're going to get this bridge pickup and put all of the hardware into it. Let's do that this way. The 
pretty cool with that Ron Ellis stamp on the bottom. So, I know, know the guy that I'm doing this for is really excited to get this back. But, not until we get to play it. Just gonna put these in their respective holes. We'll test out the electronics prior. This is just so the screws don't sit loose. These were like just contact soldered in before, so I just stuck that hot lead as you'd want it to be through the peg on that switch. I don't know, I'm not, not interested in making this less reliable, so we're gonna do it the right way rather than just a little contact. I think frankly it's a little bit lucky that that stayed in before. I like to overstress the joints because if I can't break them with stressing them, then I know they're going to hold up in the guitar because they don't move in theory once they're in, but you know you have to bend them into place. So I just like to make sure they are nice and attached. Also probably looks crazier than what I'm actually doing. All right, so here are my grounds. Keep these. Straighten them all out. They're kind of frayed everywhere, so everything is pretty much a sharp little end at the moment. We'll take our last one here. Join that. What, what I will do is just take a little tool and because these are Yeah, you can see that's nice. Again, let's wait for it to cool and we'll stress it. That's going nowhere. We got all the wires in. This looks great. Which means we can sink this guy back in here. Screw him down. Then test out our electronics. I like to make sure that all the plates, especially on a Strat, something that's got oh, something that's got a lot of wiring underneath of any sort of plate, whether metal or plastic, like a pick guard or something like this. I just like to make sure that this sits flush against the body without having to push it all down. Generally, it means that you've put all the wires in the right place instead of squishing, stressing joints that you've just made. Um, but yeah, if you can get wiring in and you can get the plate to sit flat with no tension or with no squishing it down or the screws having to hold it flush, then you're gold. All right, that's probably not hard to hear. And then if we darken that, perfect. Neck pickup. If we darken that. So that all works, both of them. Darken. Wiring is a success. All right, let's get the black guard back on. And then we'll put the strings on. Flathead. Bridge plate. Let's just set our pickup height before we throw the guard back on. I got the strings, you know, tensioned enough for this. What to do is we're gonna do 6 64ths on the bass side and 5 64ths on the treble side. It's just the fender spec. Um, it's what I used just to set up before we did this. So we'll just do the exact same setup so we're not dealing with pickup height differences between the two pickup sets.
So now that we have the pickup height set, we are just going to put the black guard on and then we are ready to check it out. And now it's time to make some noise. Let's get back in the room. All right, let's get some baseline sounds before we do the pickup swap in the Danacaster. In order to do that, we're gonna use the Two Rock Classic Reverb Signature and the settings on that amp look like this. And it's gonna be guitar straight to amp for all of our clean sounds in comparison. And then for the dirt, for the overdrive, I've been really liking this Zvex 59 sound. It's a really, really awesome tweed-ish pedal. And then into that, I'm gonna use the EP Booster. So those two in combination are gonna be our overdrive sound. I have put a brand new set of strings on this guitar and I'm going to use that set before and after uh, the pickup swap just to be as similar as I can so there's no effect from like brand new strings, for example. So let's get into it. Let's get some bass line sounds.
Cap. We took a Danocaster single cut, factory pickups that were in it. We replaced them with some Ron Ellis pickups. The output is a little bit lower. Flash those specs on the screen again, just for the sake of comparison. And I think a guitar that sounded incredible to start sounds amazing now. I really, there's something, it's a little bit more articulate. You know, it's like that yes and, it's like a little bit of a, a bonus. There's a little bit more articulation. There's a little bit more note clarity. Whether that's all related to the output of the pickups or not, hard to say. The other thing that it has is a little bit more dynamic range. The first, the first note that I hit and I had to go pause the tape, I thought I had to go check the pre's because it felt like it was a little bit louder even. Even with the pickup heights being exactly the same as the pickups we took out and the ones we took out being hotter, it felt louder, and I think what I realized was that it was really the dynamic range, and, and you can get even more out of the pickup, which also speaks to a little bit more note clarity, even with the overdrives on and set to the exact same settings we were using with the pickups before. So, really goes to show you, you can change the tone a little bit with some pickup swaps. I think this was a cool little experiment, and, and certainly, you know, the, the dream of the dream, right? A, a vintage spec telly with some really awesome pickups in it, and it certainly does the thing. If you like this video and you liked seeing the pickup swap and you enjoyed the before and the after comparison, like and subscribe to the channel. I have a lot more DIY projects coming up that I'm gonna post as videos. I have a lot more guitar demos coming up and also some music theory lessons planned. I'll see you guys in the next one.